From Daily Trust News Center, this is News Hour. On News Hour tonight, as Nigeria marks 62nd Independence Day, President Buhari appeals to Academic Staff Union of Universities to resume work. Using this Independence Day celebration to reiterate my call for the striking Academic Staff Union of Universities to return to the classroom. Troops killed scores of insurgents rescue another Chibok girl who recently gave birth to twins. Borno State celebrates Independence Day anniversary, first time in 12 years. On the foreign scene, gunshots erupt again, roads blocked in Burkina Faso after second coup. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News R. I am Medina Nadabu. Governors across Nigeria on Saturday held commemorative events to mark the 62nd anniversary of Nigeria's independence. In this report, Trust TV takes a look at how the celebrations were marked in some states. The report. Across the length and breadth of Nigeria, chants of the national anthem rent the air while the green white green colors of the national flag dotted the Nigerian landscape. In Lagos, the governor Babajide Sonwulu led the celebration at the Mubalaji Johnson Arena, Lagos Island. The governor urged political leaders ahead of the 2023 elections to focus on issue-based campaigns and refrain from division in the country. In Nasara State, Governor Abdullahi Sule acknowledged the achievements and challenges witnessed during the period under review and advised people to love one another and contribute to the development of the country and state. I therefore appeal to our political parties and players to adhere strictly to democratic ethos rule of law and adherence to the provision of electoral act. I enjoin you to play politics without bitterness, because at the end of it all, we'll have one Nasarawa state. His predecessor and senator representing Nasara South, Tanku Al Makura, said there was need to reflect on Nigeria's 62-year journey with a view to righting the wrongs of the past for national development. But this does not end with civilian uh, politicians alone. The INEC itself, who is the empire, must be an impartial empire and conduct the process in a manner in which everybody will be proud. In Plato State, Simon Lalong, the governor, called for harmonious coexistence among Nigerians, irrespective of their differences, noting that it was only when they followed that path that Nigeria would experience real development. To harvest them for the good of the citizens who are diverse in ethnic, religious, social and political orientations. Our diversity, which is in itself is a major resource, has also put demands on managing our environments to the point that many questions. During the independence celebrations in the Northwest, Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje at the Sunny Abacha Stadium, Kano, urged the public and politicians to be agents of peace. We are celebrating the birth of our nation as the most challenging period in our history. We are, however, grateful for our culture that events in the last few weeks are giving us hope as the Nigerian military and the other state agencies have recorded a new successes. For Nigerians, a day like this offers renewed hope as they look forward to better days, especially as the nation goes into another round of general elections in the next few months. President Muhammadu Buhari has assured Nigerians that their resilience and patience would not be in vain as his administration is committed to de-escalating the security challenges confronting the country. He spoke on Saturday in Abuja in what would be his last independence anniversary speech. The president explained that 
security forces were now grappling with newer forms of insecurity in the form of kidnapping, banditry, mindless murder, and molestation of innocent citizens. Recognizing the importance of a well-educated populace, Buhari expressed regret at the recurring disruption to the country's tertiary education system. He therefore once again appealed to striking members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, to return to the classroom. As we continue to de-escalate the security challenges that confronted us at the inception of this administration, newer forms alien to our country began to manifest, especially in the areas of kidnappings, molestation, killings of innocent citizens, banditry, all of which are being addressed by our security forces. I share the pains Nigerians are going through, and I assure you that your resilience and patience will not be in vain as this administration continues to reposition as well as strengthen the security agencies to enable them to deal with all forms of security challenges. I must confess that I am very pained by the recurrent disruption to our tertiary education system, and I am using this Independence Day celebration to reiterate my call for the striking academic staff union of universities to return to the classroom while assuring them to deal with their contending issues within the limits of the scarce resources available. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabia Mila, has rejoiced with Nigerians on the occasion of the country's 62nd independence anniversary. Bajabi Amila said, as a country, Nigeria has come a long way and made tremendous progress in the 62 years of her independence, noting that the citizens have a lot to celebrate despite the challenges facing them. The speaker noted that as a nation, Nigeria remains a force to reckon with in the Committee of Nations and called on leaders and followers to remain steadfast. In a statement by his special advisor on media and publicity, Landry Lassisi, the speaker expressed optimism that Nigeria and Nigerians would come out stronger in the face of daunting challenges, including insecurity. As Nigeria celebrates its 62nd Independence Day, goodwill messages have been sent to Nigerians across various cities to commemorate the day. In this report, Chiamaka Nwafo takes a look at the wishes of the three leading presidential contenders in the 2023 general elections. Goodwill messages and prayers are a normal feature of Nigeria's independence celebrations every year. This is the year before general elections and the presidential hopefuls are having their say. Labour Party candidate Peter Obi says Rather than celebrating, Nigerians continue to grapple with the challenges of bad government. These, he says, is evident with the insecurity, worsening economy, corruption, various forms of abuse of public officers, and all manners of impunity. The Labour Party candidate is determined that the country must be rescued and turned around. Speaking in the same vein, Candidate of the main opposition People's Democratic Party, PDP, Atiku Abubaka, says the issues that continue to compromise national unity must be fixed. Fixing these issues will, according to him, create an environment that can encourage economic prosperity. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate for the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is urging Nigerians to be committed to unity and collective improvement. Nigerians, he says, must see themselves as brothers and sisters to make real change and progress. The messages of all three candidates is that Nigerians should be guided by unity and progressive change in next year's general elections.
Shama Kama for Trust TV News, Abuja. Nigerians have been called upon to be patriotic, irrespective of tribe or religion, to enable the country achieve the objective of the amalgamation of Nigeria's former protractors. The call is part of the agenda set by Nigerians for the country's sustained development as the nation marks another independence anniversary. In this report, Trust TV's Kabir Lawal, who was at the Eagle Square in Abuja, looks at the level of patriotism among Nigerians in the country. His report. Nigeria is 62 years old as an independent nation. Ever since its independence from the British colonial rule on October 1st, 1960, it has been a checked history for the country. From 1960 to date, Nigeria has had 16 heads of government, eight of whom were military, with two of them later becoming democratically elected presidents. However, in Abuja, people from all walks of life came out in mass to celebrate the country's 62nd anniversary, a development many see as mark of patriotism. I'm very confident that when the, uh, my party wins the next election, they would consolidate on the gains of the administration, in the area of infrastructure, the economy, and security. Nigerians believe that country will be a better place if everyone unites to foster the ideals of nationalism. Well, the way forward is that we must believe in Nigeria. That's what it means. I mean, at 62, if you are still one, it means that that is something that uh, can, can really be, uh, be managed properly. And that is why we are happy where we are in terms of potential, in terms of opportunities, not in terms of what is happening today. If you can still remain one and be celebrating the way we are celebrating here today, there's a lot that the leader can show to the, out to the rest of the world. Highlights of the event were colorful displays by military and paramilitary formations. We're, we're excited yeah. to celebrate another year of independence. I think it's a, it's a blessing that uh, Nigeria has gotten this far. You know, some people always forget that we, Independence Day means that we were once under, we were once under um, colonial rule and that now we're actually independent. So that's, that, that's a big step in we still have our issues, we still have plenty of problems that we need to resolve. And it starts with, with all of us, to be honest. It's not just, you know, the, the government, it's not just, uh, it, it starts with the people. And I think uh, it starts from our homes, it starts from our mosques, our churches, our schools. To return its glory days, many are of view that Nigeria must deepen its democracy and invest more in education and empowerment of its largely youthful population. Kabir Lowell, Trust TV News, Abuja. Thousands of Nigerian youths on Saturday marched through the streets of Lagos to drum up support for the Labour Party presidential candidate, Peter Obi. The supporters defied the early morning shower and security to hold the rally in parts of Lagos. The rally was held simultaneously in Ikeja, Festac, Suruleri, and Lagos Island, Leki Axis as many youths trooped out in large numbers to show solidarity and support for the candidature of Obi, whom they say is the most suitable candidate to be president come 2023. Despite the massive presence of security men at the toll gate, it was observed that the supporters passed through the toll gate and headed straight to Lekki. The development triggered massive gridlock along the ever-busy Lekki Epe Expressway. I'm obedient is that I have seen a man that have the quality, that have the character to govern the nation. I have seen a man who have done something in Anambra State and asked me to go and verify what he have done. And I went and verified and I see that what the man did was correct. Yeah, I'm obedient because I've seen that he's the best amongst all of them. Watch how this man takes interviews on TV, in, in, yeah, on shows. Simple questions, he goes to give you illustration. Go to Ethiopia when he was in Tanzania. This is how these people do it over here. But others are just over like, man, eh, it's their time or these are supposed to be, they've done it before. I don't know, no, no, no. We need courage, man. Eh? And the man is just really giving us analysis. And that's why I'm for him. I want to tell the Nigerian youth 
When you vote for B, you vote for good governance. You vote for B, you vote for better economy. You vote for B, you vote for confidence. OB is saying, not vote for me because I'm an evil man. It's vote for me because I, am a, I have the capacity to take the nation to the next level. Troops of Operation Hat and Kai have rescued another Chiba girl who gave birth to four-month-old set of twins in Borno State. The troops, in conjunction with the Civilian Joint Task Force, CJTF, conducted operations last Thursday after it stormed the enclave of the terrorist group in the Buladao Axis in Bama local government area of Borno State, killing an unspecified number of insurgents and wounding several others. It was gathered that Yana Pogu murdered one of the terrorist commanders who fled the onslaught and left him and left behind his wife and four children. According to Zaga Zola Makama, a counterinsurgency expert and security analyst in Lake Chad, the troops engaged and overwhelmed the insurgents, neutralizing scores of them. Boko Haram insurgents had kidnapped 276 female students from the Government Girls Secondary School, Chibok, in 2014. Bandits who kidnapped three sisters in Kaduna, including a pregnant housewife that gave birth in captivity, have threatened to kill the hostages, including the newborn baby, if the family fails to pay 50 million Naira ransom. The three sisters were kidnapped on July 17 this year at their family house in the Mando area of Kaduna State, where they were taking care of their sick mother. Bello Musa reports. So, unfortunately, this week came. In fact, me, I could be able to escape. But these children did not go because they don't know what it will happen to their mother. They asked me to find my way out. They will stay. And they stay. So when I came after all this thing, when I came back, they said they have picked them. They have gone with them. I take this thing like a light, some sort, likely something, maybe in a week, two weeks. We have now spent almost, if I'm not mistaken, we are now running to 10, 10 weeks now. The kidnappers are demanding the ransom of 15 million naira before the three daughters and a newborn baby will be released. We thought maybe, we thought maybe with the condition of the boy and everything, they will release them. Up to now, they did not release them. We have been pleading, they say no. We now stand on 50 million. That with that 50 million, we should not even make any comment. And these children, always when they call us, they will be crying. There was a time we even flogged them. To the extent that my last daughter fainted. It's, it's a sad story. For a parent, somebody like me to be, I can't talk to them. It's my son normally talk to them. To the extent that she, she fainted, you have to pour out water. The one who is nursing the baby, they, they, beat, her, they beat her, and when they are beating them, they will put it on speaker so that we will be hearing their crying. The mother of the abducted victims could not hold her emotions as she urged Nigerians to come to their aid. They asked us to pay 50 million naira. People assisted us. Arrest 5.6 million naira. But the kidnappers rejected it. We need help. They call on security agencies and Nigerians to support them to rescue the newborn baby and their three daughters. Belle Musa, Cross TV News, Kaduna. The Registrar of the Teachers' Registration Council of Nigeria, TRCN, Josiah Olushegun Ajiboye, has said attacks on schools by insurgents have claimed the lives of more than 2,295 teachers in the Northeast between 2009 and 2022. Ajiboye, who said this while delivering a paper at the 2022 National Delegates Conference of the Nigeria Union of Teachers, NUT, in Ibadan, called for the full implementation of the Safe Schools Declarations Guidelines endorsed by Nigeria in 2015 and ratified by President Muhammadu Buhari in 2019. He further said that over 1,500 schools were forced to close due to insurgency and more than 600,000 children have lost access to education. 
The TRCN boss therefore called on the federal government to review its security architecture to address the deteriorating security situation because of terrorism and violent attacks on education. He noted that as a way forward, federal, state and local education authorities should facilitate the immediate implementation of the national policy on safety, security and violence-free schools by making budgetary provisions. The police in Zamfara State have arrested a bandit and two suppliers of petrol to bandits operating in Nkurmi Forest in the state. It recovered a golf vehicle with registration number Lagos EJ556LSD, 47 empty jerry cans of 25 liters and 9,000 naira cash. A statement by the Zamfara State Police Command's public relations officer, Mohamed Shehu, identified the suspected bandit and bandits collaborators as Julie Musa, Surajo Yahaya, and Bello Abubakar. In a similar fashion, police tactical operatives had earlier acted on intelligence information that led to the arrest of a notorious bandit who has been terrorizing innocent members of the public in Zurumi, Birni Magaji, and Kaura Namuda local government areas. The commissioner of police, Kolo Yusuf, while reassuring the public of the command's commitment to the protection of lives and property, appealed for continuous collaboration with the police and other security agencies in an effort to read the state of criminal activities. You're watching News Hour. Coming up after the break, Dibal's patriotism as a game changer. Stay with us. As the 2023 elections draw near, remember, evil prospers when good men and women only wish for peace, but never take a step to make peaceful elections happen. Are you a father? Are you a mother? What are you saying to your children as elections approach? Have you warned them not to let themselves be used to cause violence? Have you explained to them what the consequences of electoral violence might be? Do your part to make peaceful elections happen. Talk to your children. Protect them from unscrupulous politicians who want to put them in harm's way while their own children are comfortable at home, within and outside the country. Let's join hands to make 2023 elections peaceful. This message is from the National Orientation Agency, NOAA. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, this is News Hour on Trust TV. A recap of our top stories. As Nigeria marks 62nd Independence Day, President Buhari appeals to Academic Staff Union of Universities to resume work. And troops kill scores of insurgents rescue another Chibok girl who recently gave birth to twins. Moving to other stories. Borno State Government has said it will renew its commitment to providing critical infrastructure destroyed by the decade-long Boko Haram insurgency and minimize the upsurge of social vices in the state. 
The government gave the assurance at the celebration of Nigeria's Independence Day in Meduguri, the Borno state capital. The report. It is the first Independence Day celebration at Ramat Square after 12 years of insurgency in Borno State. The event had hundreds, including dignitaries, witnessed the day as the Nigerian police force in their ceremonial attire thrilled attendees with colorful displays. The governor of Borno State, represented by his deputy, said the peaceful gathering is an indication of the successes recorded against terrorists. He added that his government is committed to resettling all IDPs in their ancestral homes to enable it to focus on other plans. <laughs> It is believed that this year's independence anniversary will usher in a new dawn of peace in the years to come. As Nigeria marks its 62nd independence anniversary, the Kwara State Governor has urged Nigerians to have faith in the solutions to various challenges facing the country as successes are being recorded daily in various sectors. At an event to mark the day, the Governor noted that Nigeria is a nation on the rise on many fronts. On Kwara State, he assured of the readiness of his administration to consolidate on its achievements for the betterment of the people. With gratitude to Almighty God and respect to all our founding fathers and mothers, I join Mr. President to congratulate Nigeria on the 62nd independence anniversary of our country. Nigeria is a nation on the rise. I agree that we are struggling against various challenges of nation building. Yes, we are up against fluctuations of the global economy. However, our country is not stagnant. We are not hopeless. Every day new successes are being recorded and the economy is improving. Infrastructure development, defense, and democracy is progressing. Things are getting better every day. Um, I hereby enjoy us to play our roles in bringing together national peace, unity, and collective growth of the nation. The National Population Commission, NPC, has expressed concern that it has demarcated only four local government areas out of the 14 local government areas of Zamfara State. This, the NPC said, is due to the challenge of accessing the remaining 10 local government areas, adding that if nothing is done, it will affect the 2023 population and housing census in those LGAs in the state. The Federal Commissioner in the Commission, Mohamed Muntak Ayrini, made this known during a stakeholder summit in Guso, the state capital, aimed at creating awareness on the 2023 census. The report. Gathered in this hall are members of civil society organization, academia, traditional rulers, religious leaders, and representatives of security agencies, among others. They are here to brainstorm on how well they can work together to ensure the successful conduct of the 2023 population and housing census in the state and the country in general. They emphasize the need for the Commission to increase awareness and recruit qualified Nigerians as ad hoc staff for the exercise in order to ensure accurate data is gathered for proper planning and to engender sustainable development in the country. So, any plan, then, 
come to develop mental activities. Uh, and what has happened this morning, uh, the exercise is going to be a success. Everyone is on board. I would like to also register our support and commitment to the National Population Commission that we, the civil society in Zampara State, uh, will extend what we have been doing at the national level. I am here to show our concern and to support the third government to achieve our objective with the census of 2023. The MPC Federal Commissioner for Zamfara State, Mohamed Mutak Arini, assured Nigerians that the Commission is committed to deploying technology to conduct credible and acceptable population and housing census, which will provide data that will serve as catalysts for national development. The Governor of Zamfara State, Bello Muhammad, represented by his Deputy Chief of Staff, Jaladin Maradu, appealed to the traditional rulers to double their efforts in mobilizing residents in their communities to actively participate in the 2023 population and housing census. This is a which is a wonderful opportunity for the stakeholders to talk together for all clients and share knowledge and experience of the preparations for the upcoming centers is timely. The stakeholders believe that creating awareness is one of the keys to conducting a successful census, hence the need for the Commission to intensify efforts to sensitize Nigerians on the 2023 population and housing census. 14 farmers in Taraba State have died in a boat mishap and several others missing while trying to harvest crops from a flooded farm. The farmers were said to be inside 12 canoes harvesting their maize when the canoes capsized as a result of heavy rainfall and strong wind. The incident, it was learned, occurred at Guamtamu village in Gasol local government area of the state on Thursday. The farmers who were from different villages located close to River Benway numbered about 50 with reports saying 15 bodies were recovered while many were still missing. The Taraba Police Command says it is awaiting a report on the incident. The federal government says it is proposing legislation to ban the consumption of animal skin popularly known as pomo. This, according to the Nigerian Institute of Leather and Science Technology, Nihilist, will help revive the leather industry of the economy. The Director General of the Institute, Mohamed Kabir Yakubu, in this interview, speaks on the security and health dangers of consuming pomo, its economic benefits to the leather industry, and sundry other issues. It has security implications, one. And it also has health implications. That is second. Now, health implications first. Now, um, leather or hides and skin is being imported from West African countries. I just heard yesterday that uh, uh, WHO, WHO, World Health Organization, uh, complained to the Nigerian government that uh, a lot of hides and skin which is not uh, monitored, which is not uh, well processed, is being imported into Nigeria. And what that means is that, unknown to us, we'll be eating fast and skis that are not actually uh, made of, uh, uh, that are actually sourced from cows. We may be eating hides and skin that are either cotton from other animals, or hides and skin that are actually obtained from dead animals. Yes. Because if Nigeria is a ready market for any house and skin, so somebody can just in a, across this border over of Nigeria, or even within Nigeria, he wouldn't give a damn. If he sees a dead animal, we just quickly go and slow and get and flare the, the skin uh, I mean out and then process it by burning using uh, you know only God knows what it is as well, package it and then it's brought over to for us to eat. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the 2022 United Nations International Day of Older Persons, the federal government has assured that it will empower senior citizens across the country to enable them enjoy the benefits of aging. The United Nations International Day of Older Persons, UNIDOP, 
which is marked on the 1st of October each year, is to raise awareness about issues affecting the elderly, such as senior science, elder abuse, and also appreciate the contributions that older people make to the society. In Nigeria, the federal government, through the National Senior Citizen Center, NSCC, says it is going beyond the 2022 theme, resilience of older persons in a changing world, to empower of senior citizens, especially women, to enable them access the benefits and rights of older people as captured in the NSCC blueprint. Of course, you know that the same political uh, uh, presidential declaration that set aside October 5th. It was in that same venue, that same address that set aside that um, directive. That older persons should be progressively registered and given a special identity card to enable them to access um, discounts, concessions, priority treatment in public places, just general age friendly environment. And we have been working very assiduously with NIPS through a technical working group. Oshun State Government has been charged to cater to older persons in the state to enable them to live well and enjoy the remaining part of their lives. On the 14th of December 1990, the United Nations General Assembly designated October 1st as the International Day of Older Persons to celebrate the lives of senior citizens. The theme for the International Day of Older Persons 2022 is Resilience of Older Persons in a Changing World. A nonprofit organization in Oshun State organized a get together for older persons in Oshobo, where the senior citizens spent time together, played different games, and underwent medical checkups, among other events. Today, being International Day for the Older Persons, which is October 1st, we have put this together to bring our old people together to have fun, to watch the, I mean, to, to watch a video on heart failure and what they can do to help themselves if there's an attack. A retired teacher in the state, Iola Bola Ojolape, lamented that older people are not recognized in Nigeria saying that the International Day of Older Persons means a lot to her as it gives them a sense of belonging. The day is specially made for the elderly to celebrate them. Because if you celebrate the elderly, they will be happy and they will feel belong. Another participant, Adeoye Oladako, also called on the government to remember older persons in the scheme of things and also cater to them. As far as the elderly people are concerned, we feel that the government will take care of the older people in as much as with their resources to carry them. So by so doing, we shall be in a position to enjoy more life abundance. The need to address the needs of older persons gave rise to the establishment of the National Senior Citizens Center, NSCC, by President Muhammad Buhari. That was Hamid Oyegbade's story as presented in our studio. Located in Kano State, Gidan Danghausa played an important role in the modernization of northern Nigeria, but only a few know the history behind the beautiful building. It is where the English language was first taught in northern Nigeria by the then colonial education director Hans Vescher, who was later named Danghausa by the locals. As Nigeria marks 62nd years of independence, correspondent Idris Jibrin takes a look at Gidan Anghausa historical monument in Kano. Gidan Anghausa is said to be more than 250 years old and was originally owned by a local chief responsible for managing the Amias farmland, but later became the Kano's first colonial residency and a birthplace of Western education in northern Nigeria. Gidanda Hausa, a place where first school was established in Western style. Mm -hmm. This board we are seeing is a profile of Dan Hausa, but his name is, his full name is Hans Vista. Available records show that the school, which started under the colonial education director Hans Vista, with 30 pupils in 1909, 
had graduated a total of 209 students in 1913, all of whom were drawn from the 11 northern provinces. This is the statistical figure of the student in 1909. You can see them from number one up to 14. 14. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Then there is 1918 student of Makaranta Nahausa from number one up to nine. Okay. This is the profile of Gidan Nahausa as it is. Mm. It's a massive Hausa structural monument. In recognition of his understanding and perfect command of Hausa language, Hans Vester was nicknamed Nahausa, while the house referred to as Gidan Nahausa. Gidan Nahausa was named after a colonial director of education who established a school in Western style in 1909. Mm. The main reason why the, his name was called, uh, his full name is Hans Vista, but the student nicknamed him as Danhausa because he speaks fully in Tausa to the extent of translating our Arabic manuscript. That was why how Danhausa was derived or was nicknamed to him. His full name is Hans Vista. He was Switzerland by birth, neutralized to Britain. After the Nigerian independence in 1960, various administrations in Kanu uses Gidan Danghausa for different purposes while maintaining its identity of being an important historical center. Now, immediately after independence, uh, the military government at that time uh, made use of the premises because by then, the History and Culture Bureau was not even established, uh, but the Gidan Ahosa was still there, and the government used it to serve several other purposes. For instance, uh, it served as a relief center, center for relief and emergency situation whenever there was a disaster, or whether natural or natural disaster to the people. Then a, a relief package was organized and then Gidan Ahosa become a center. 62 years after the nation's independence, Gidan Danghausa now serves as the headquarters of Kano State History and Culture Bureau and an office complex for the State Ministry of Culture and Tourism, effectively preserving its centuries-old historical identity. Idris Jibrin, Trust TV News, Kano. Independence Day anniversary celebration is often a reminder of colonial subjugation and exploitation. Colonial buildings and structures erected in yesteryears will remain solid till now, create an impression that colonialism is not necessarily an evil after all. However, historians like Sali Subala say those structures built by colonial masters are reminders of enslavery and domination by the white men. Trust TV Bello Musa has more. Kaduna is one of the places in Nigeria where the colonial masters lived in the early 19th century. Many structures were erected by the colonial masters as administrative offices or residences, and many of them are still standing. Twin Towers at NDA bus stop Kaduna is one of the historic buildings still standing, though shifted from its original position to another position during the expansion of the road by the administration of Komnanasuri Erifai. A deputy director of Ariwa House Center for Historical Documentation and Research, Dr. Salus Sibala, gives background of such colonial structures. It's one of the most important uh, landmarks as far as colonial history of the Kaduna metropolis is concerned. It signifies, you know, the main entrance of Kaduna metropolis, especially during the time of Lolugat when he was here as governor general of the northern region. Other structures erected in Kaduna by the colonial administration include a bridge at the Gamji Gate, a tower at the Lugat residence, and the Lugat Hall, which houses the Kaduna State House of Assembly. There's also another one which is close to the water board. You remember that tall building is also, you know, part of the colonial office that was maybe, you know, erected at Gamjigate, yes. It was also constructed by Lugat with his people also. It also has its own, you know, historical significance. It's because of the way they wanted to operate along that 
route. So they decided to erect that bridge, which is still there. I think it's at Gamji Gate now. Balas says Nigeria and other African countries had their civilization before the coming of the whites, adding that for Africa to develop, it must fall back to its indigenous civilization. So if we want to get out of the woods, if we want to get out of our present predicaments, present challenges, we must look inward. We have solutions to our problems. That is the message. We have, our own, we have solutions right inside us, within us both socially, economically, and politically. So it's, it's high time we stop, you know, thinking as if we don't have civilization. The historian says, though Nigerians celebrate Independence Day, it is rather a period for sober reflection by looking back at past, the present, and the future. Bella Musa, Trust TV News, Kaduna. Borno-born medical scientist Dibal Arikyalu Wandali has customized almost every possession of his to green, white, green, Nigeria's national colors. In the spirit of the 2022 Independence Day celebration, Trust TV's Ibrahim Ismail visits Dibal in his Bio residence, also painted in national colors. The report. This is the greenhouse built by Dibal Ariel Wandali, popularly known as Mr. Nigeria, bearing Nigeria's national colors, green, white, green. The building is located at Usmandala area, Bill Town, the local government area of Borno State, Northeast Nigeria. Born in October 1963, the medical scientist has been promoting Nigeria's color for over 30 years. Mr. Nigeria, who benefited from national scholarship and studied in Bulgaria, have customized everything at his residence in Nigerian colors, all for the purpose of unity. Well, the passion of uh, being patriotic was inherent in me from childhood. The reason is this. When I watch television in those days, our old founding fathers like uh, Namdi Azikwe, Tafawa Balewa, and the rest inspired me from the world go. So I was proud then to be a Nigerian. And when I grew up, I continued to nurture that inherent this thing in me. And that was how the passion started. So uh, with that, when I, I became matured, I said, well, whatever comes up, whatever I may be, I would like to remain a Nigerian. The architect who designed the customized greenhouse is proud of the project. I was a baby architect when I do this work. So uh, it's my base work, sir. You understand? That is my best work. Initially, some members of the Bell's family who were uncomfortable with everything looking uniform at their residence are now happy with the green white green look. Green white green man, I don't appreciate the color. It doesn't fit someone at times. That's what I used to tell him, especially black people. I said the green white doesn't fit them. But as far he loves green white green, so I have to adopt it. At the General Hospital View, where Mr. Dibal Ariel works, management and members of staff testified to his patriotism. Most dedicated person to his job. Uh, I don't think if he left us, we will have uh, someone that will replace his position. In the nearest uh, years, that will come. Amid multiple challenges of insecurity, economic turbulence, and endemic corruption, the devil in Nigeria, Dibal believes the country will be great in the near future. So the leaders of today should look backwards and learn from what our forefathers have done. And I believe Nigeria will be great again. The story of men like Dibal are often untold, though his patriotism needs to be celebrated. From view in Borno State, Ibrahim Ismail reporting for Trust TV. In business news, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited has acquired all 380 Owando retail outlets and aviation and gas brands nationwide 
from OVH Energy as it targets hitting 1,500 stations shortly from about 550 NNPC stations. Speaking at the unveiling of one of the new NNPC limited stations, formerly Owando in Abuja, the group chief executive officer NNPC Limited, Mele Kiari, said the acquisition will bring over 380 additional filling stations under NNPC retail brand in Nigeria and Togo on the company's journey to attaining 1,500 stations. Kiari also noted that the acquisition was to strengthen the downstream business portfolio to enhance profitability and guarantee national energy security. He commended the board for the acquisition, just as he lauded President Muhammadu Buhari, who is also the Minister of Petroleum, for laying the foundation for improving energy access. The Katsuna State Command of the Nigeria Customs Service has generated over 120 million naira in the last month. The command made the disclosure during its monthly briefing held in Katsuna from where Abdullahi Yamadi completes the report. The command said it seized imported contraband with a duty value of over 79 million naira, as well as vehicles used in conveying the smuggled goods into the country. Help us, please, inside the public, extend this message to the public. Looks and corners, let them see the reality. We mean business. Please let them desist and come and do the right thing. The government is happy to see the citizens going about their local business so that will be what we call an improvement of quality life. The seized items also include 594 bags of foreign rice, duty value of about 18 million naira, 96 cartons of foreign sofagetti valued at 576,000 naira, and 95 cartons of foreign macaroni with 570,000 naira duty value. The customs is part of our cardinal points to foot a trade facilitation. Ease of doing business is our business, part of our cardinal points. Therefore, with this, I'm now calling on the public. Customs means business. We are serious. We have seen it, we are doing it, and we are winning day by day. The customs operatives also said they seized 100 units of Tokumbo tires, 300 bags of flour, 50 bales of second-hand clothes, and 21 bags of tiger nut, with a total value of over 11 million naira. Other seizures made by the customs command within the past month are milk, rolls of second-hand clothes and gallons of vegetable oil imported into the country. We are ready at any time come forward on how to help you so I can go about doing your business. If you look at what is happening along Jibia Road now or Jibia uh, outstation, you find out that even the rate of crime, as far as crime is concerned, it has been increasing day by day. Simply because people have what, what to do. People have what to do because the business is moving. We're talking about creating jobs and the jobs are being created daily on daily basis. We have what to call the inflow of imports at the same time export. That's going out. That is export. The Customs Command says it recorded an increase in revenue generation compared to the previous month due to the cooperation the command is enjoying from importers and other stakeholders. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Kazana. On the foreign scene, gunshots rang out Saturday in Burkina Faso's capital amid signs of lingering tensions a day after a group of military officers overthrew the man who had seized power in a coup only nine months earlier. Roads remained blocked in Ouagadougou, where a helicopter could be heard flying overhead. As uncertainty prevailed Saturday, the international community condemned the ouster of Lieutenant Colonel Paul Henry Sandaogo Damiba, who overthrew the country's democratically elected president in January. 
The African Union and the West African Regional Bloc, known as ECOWAS, sharply criticized the developments. After taking power, Damiba made promises to end the Islamic extremist violence that forced two million people to flee their homes in Burkina Faso. In sports news, the Moroccan government has called on Adidas to pull its new jersey collection for Algeria's national football team off the market, accusing the German sports apparel company of appropriating Moroccan cultural heritage. Morocco's Ministry of Youth, Culture and Communication said in a statement this week that the design on the jerseys of the rival North African team depicts a traditional mosaic of colored earthenware tiles known in Morocco as Zalige. In a letter sent to Adidas CEO Kaspar Rosted, Morocco demanded that the company should either withdraw the jersey within two weeks and release a statement to identify the Zalige O of Morocco as an inspiration. It also threatened to bring the case before organizations relating to the protection of heritage and copyright, including the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. With that, we've come to the end of News Hour on Trust TV. You can follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Medina Dauda thanking you for watching. Have a great weekend.